Sabbath. Oh, we need that. We. I'm happy to to see you once again. We had a, a wonderful week together. And uh, it was a privilege for my wife and I to spend this time here with you guys. And we hope to come back very soon. We are going to miss each one of you. But uh, the most important is that we spend time studying the Bible. And the main topic that we are studying this week was about the second coming of Jesus. And we study about the signs of Jesus' second coming. We study about the second coming of Jesus. How we can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. How God wants to change our lives. How God wants to change everything in our hearts. And uh, we study here about the Bible about the importance of prayer. And today I'd like to invite you to study this uh, very important topic. So today our study here is about heaven. The Bible talks a lot about heaven. And Jesus, we have to remember what Jesus said. In John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3, Jesus gave us a promise. He was talking with his disciples. And he said, Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in God. And Jesus said, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to, I have to go back to heaven. Because I want to prepare a place for you. A place that I'm going to be with you forever. So Jesus was not just talking about an idea. Jesus was talking about something real. It was, heaven is not a dream. Heaven is not an illusion. Heaven is a place real place that God has prepared for us. It's so real, as real as this village. As real as the things that we can see here. And the Bible says that God is the builder of that city. And the Bible also says that that place is called Heavenly Country. And we belong to that place. Our citizenship is not here. We are citizens of heaven. So that's why it doesn't matter. It's not important. Were you born here in this planet? Because we belong to God's country. To the place that he has prepared for us. And the Bible says that the capital of this country... It's called New Jerusalem. And that is an amazing city. 
Bigger than anything that we can imagine. Think about a big city. We have big cities today in the world. Think about Bangkok. Or Shanghai. Or Tokyo. It's much bigger than that. It's something special that God is preparing for us. And when Jesus comes to take us to heaven, we are going to be in that city with him for a thousand years in heaven. And the Bible says that after the thousand years, this city is going to come down to this planet. And all the citizens of it, all of us, they are in heaven, we are going to come with this city. And God is going to be in that city with us. And before we touch this planet, this, this planet is going to be transformed. It's going to be purified by fire. Because uh, Satan, the demons, our evil needs to be destroyed. And everything is going to be perfect. And God's kingdom is going to be on this planet. With you and I. If we want to be part of God's plan. And the Bible says that that is going to be a place that there will be no sorrow, no pain, no death. And God is going to be with us. And I want to share with you uh, our Bible verse for today. It's Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 5. It says, Then the angel said to me, Write this, for this purpose I have made you the Lord of the world. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 5. And the Bible says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write those words, because they are true and faithful. <laughs> Doiti Muko Tho the Hako Zola, Ridi Muko, La Cotti the Hako La Cotti ne Puguila. Do Polet Ulaba. Doiti was also Jerusalem at Tho. Oak take the Dit La Mupo Muki Yagia the La Wagotone. Hello, you are Ola Mukola. Doina Huta Glutha Padula Muko da Siweda. Qua qua. You are there Uda Pagnon, Dogsa. Cooks where so where the O. Do where they give me a Pagamu do you are Sada work Uda O. Dog a Kerog Sala. Do you are twag with me, Tikela, let me. Daughter did all over. Daughter do that all over. Daughter hot at your Ulava. Daughter we two dot at Ulava. Daughter we two be that Ulava. A giddy eat a ulla cotty to Papu Gilly. Dopa lesson or lapa so poco and see where the quaqua. Your matter thought Kellala. Dossibaya, Quetarke, giddy eat a go to me, me toddle. A calutola. Amen. Let me ask a question. Play you think one, the letter, think what a flag. Do you miss anything from your past? I believe that everybody here misses something or someone that was part of our life in the past. 
I chung mo bwera pe yi dipa ka ti no ra ta ni mi 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 bwara ka ka la la pu kui bwa la pa ta mu la nya ti pa la. This is a universal feeling that everybody has. A wei ni mi ra ta tu ba ko ba ka la bwa ho ko bo ke la o da wei. More than we can actually realize. Te wei ra ta ki ti pa ni o ani di pa chung mo ra wa ra pa na pa ti ni la. So you probably miss the time that you were a child. Tu ka ti no ra da tu ba ti ti ka ta di ba ka da ki ta o ta so la ti no si ka li nya la. Maybe you missed the time that you were in a school. Or maybe a friend that, that is not here anymore. Maybe you miss a teacher. Maybe you miss uh, your house. Or the city that you came from. Or the country that you were born. Maybe you miss your brother or sister, they are not here. Maybe you miss your father or mother had passed away. Maybe you miss your husband or wife that died. Or even a son or a daughter. We miss something or someone from our past. And that is good to miss somebody. Or because that means that uh, uh, we loved people. It's good to miss places. Because that shows that we had a background, we had roots, we came from a specific place. And it is great when somebody misses you. Because that means that you are part of that person's life. That doesn't matter how far you are. No, you tell it, tell it, eh? Ah, tell it, ba? Or how, how, how long you saw that person for the last time? That, 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 so that you tell it, tell it, let it, tell it, that I'm going to get it, tell it, ba? Every time that that person thinks about you. But that blow la la la, what's in your hand, eh? The person is thinking because she, she or he loves you. Me la, what's going to get in your hand, eh? Couple la, where? Eva na, who ni la? But sometimes we miss things they are not so good. Sometimes we miss uh, opportunity, opportunities in our past. And we think about uh, what could have been done. The opportunities that, I, that we wasted. So for this reason, every opportunity that we have, we have to take it and do our best. But it doesn't matter if it is a good memory or a bad memory from our past. So it is it is a good memory or a bad memory from our past. So it is it is a good memory or a bad memory from our past. Our memories are based always on the past. But it is not only about the past. But I would like to go back to this text that we just read. Because John had the privilege of seeing something that is still in the future. We usually miss something from our past. But I believe that this moment when he saw what God has prepared for us. And, when he came back, I believe that he misses heaven. Because that was part of his life already. He saw. He heard. I believe that he could even touch. So let's go to the Bible text and see what John saw here.
The Bible says that he saw a new heaven and a new earth. A place that everything was perfect. Just like God created at the beginning. And John repeats the word, a very special word here many times. And the special word that he repeats many times here is new. Because here we have the introduction of a new beginning. God is not fixing the world. Fix the world. Fixing. Restoring. He's creating everything new again. Everything that came in contact with sin. Everything that came in contact with uh, Satan needs to be made new again. And John said also that he saw that there was no sea in heaven. In the book of Revelation, sea is a symbol of wars. It's a symbol of uh, conflicts, of persecution. We have wars in our world today all the time. People are persecuted and killed many times. When John, John said that there was no sea in heaven, that means that there will be no conflicts, no wars. In the Bible, sea is also a symbol of destruction. It was with water that this world was destroyed during the flood. That means that this world is not going to be destroyed again. And we also have to remember that John was in an island. He was in an exile. He was by himself. Away from the people that he loved. Hundreds of kilometers away. And then he was thinking about those people. The ocean, the sea was an agent of uh, separation. There will be no such thing in heaven. We don't have to say goodbye to anybody. But the Lord, what I said, in today's world, the ocean is a division between countries. There will be no such thing in heaven. Because there will be no countries. There will be God's country, God's kingdom. And then he says that he saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem. Coming down from heaven. And when he saw that. Probably he was thinking about Jesus' promise that he heard many years ago. That he told not only for John but for the other disciples. I have to go to heaven. 
Because I want to prepare you a place. And then one day I will come back. And now he sees the place that Jesus was preparing for them. It's a, a literal real city. The most wonderful city ever. That is uh, with huge dimensions. That uh, can contain all people from all generations together at the same time. And then... John saw something very important. He saw that God was dwelling in that city. God was there with his people. So there is no more distance between God and human beings. That distance there was caused by sin. There no longer exists in the New Jerusalem. We are going to be able to see God face to face just like we can see each other today. Today we can talk with God by prayer. Through prayer. And that is very special. But in the New Jerusalem, you can talk and see him. And, uh, and we are going to be there with him forever. And then he sees that uh, all those people who accepted Jesus will become God's people. And the Bible says one people, a single people, not the many peoples that we have today. So we are going to be like one people. So there will be no tie. There will be no Americans. There will be no Brazilians. There will be no Koran. Because we are going to be one people. It's speaking the same language. Ah, so we don't need the translator in heaven. Because we are going to be able to talk with each other. And then we are going to receive the attributes of God's character in our life. And then we are going to receive eternal life. And as we are in heaven. We are going to grow in Jesus Christ, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the more we grow, the more our love grows. And our happiness will grow too. And to make sure that the people not misunderstand what John was saying. He repeats twice in those five verses the same thing. He says, God will dwell with his people. And he says again, God will dwell with his people. Just to make sure that we understand that. So then, we, he, he was able also, John was able to see God with his own hands wiping the last tears from our eyes and all the pain that we had in this world all the sorrow that we had here every time that we cried Everything is going to disappear forever. All those painful memories are going to be erased. 
The memories of abuse. The memories of despair. The bad memories that we have in this world. They are gone forever. And then God is going to destroy the last enemy. Death is going to disappear forever. But, but there is one memory. One memory that is going to be with us forever. The only thing that we are going to be to remember from this world of sin. Jesus is going to keep this horse of his, of his crucifixion. The scars in his hands. The scars in his feet. In his forehead. They are going to be with him in heaven. To remind us the price that he paid for us to be there. There will be the only memory from this from this world that is going to be there with us. And uh, you can come and ask Jesus. What happened to you, Jesus? And he's going to tell you this story. I paid the price for you to be here. I, I died for your salvation. So imagine. John saw all those things. So imagine that you had the privilege that John had that day. Uh, to see everything that God has prepared for us. I would be very happy. Of, with joy. Because that is a special place. So now imagine that you are there and you see and you are there like John was. But then you realize that you have to come back. So you cannot stay there. It's not the time yet. How do you feel? How do you think that John felt? I, I just imagine that John missed heaven. To leave the presence of God. To see all those wonderful things. And now he has to come back. So the earth was never so dark. So, so cold. Dot clear. So empty. So meaningless. Like that moment for John. I just imagine that he wanted to go back. But he didn't want to come back to this world. Because life in this world didn't make any sense for him anymore. So after that vision, more than ever, John's plans were not here anymore. So He saw something better. And he wanted to go there. And I want to tell you that it doesn't matter the beautiful things that you saw in this world. Nothing compared to what John saw that day. And let me ask you this. What do you miss in this world, from this world? I believe that you miss somebody or someone in your life. But uh, this is based on the past. 
But more important than missing something in our past. We have to long for the great things that God has for us in the future. Uh, and the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor he ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Nine. First Corinthians chapter two verse nine. So and how can we long for something that we never saw? How can we long for something that we never heard? How can we long for something that uh, our heart never felt? That is not part like uh, of our reality here in this world. It's really difficult to long for something that we never experienced. But this is something that we need to learn here. Even though our eyes never saw heaven. Even though we never heard the sounds of heaven. Even though our heart that has no idea about the things of heaven, our eyes can see here, our ears can hear, our heart still, this is not our place. So we should long for a heaven. Every time that we see a child suffering in this world, we should long for heaven. Every time that we see a man that has no condition to feed his family, we we should miss heaven. Every time that we turn the TV on, or the radio on, and we see all the horrible news, the things that happen in this world, how people are dying worse, how people are being suffering in different places. Dying earthquakes with tsunamis. We should long for heaven. Every time that we see somebody dying of cancer. Or of violence. Or drugs. We should miss heaven. Every time that we see all those disasters in this world. And for this reason, we can feel like John. John saw heaven. He, he saw the new Jerusalem. And he understood that, that there was his place. So we are just like John. This planet today is not our home. 
How could the plan of God for your life? This is not the original plan of God for your life. That way, the military doctor caught the cobble like this. You are playing all and down move on over. He has something much better than this. I will order that in me like a log led dog. He don't need it that way lah. And uh, I want to share a last Bible verse here with you. Get the kick there, the panic to the sausage set sir lah. And uh, many people in the past. But I dia gal pugune. They understood that this planet was not their home. They understood that they were just passing through. And that their real country and, and citizenship is in heaven. That Bible verse is in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 through 16. Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16. Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16. Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16. The Bible says, Pain in our Hebrew God, Sita, Savo, Sita, Dilad, Sikune. All these died in the faith. They did not make the promises. They saw them from afar and saluted them. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Now those who say such things clearly show that they are seeking a homeland. If they are actually remembered where they had left, they would have the opportunity to return. But now they want a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Wherefore, God is not ashamed of them, that he is called his God, for he had prepared a city for him. <laughs> The sitter, so what is that? You're sick, huh? A worthy keller, and it didn't need but a sipa, but do see well at an apple law. Me teeth the quay, that a pani do po where, do all all let me put a mean, do but a cobble me pull local cleller, a good ye, while let's sit at dinner or pani, lop platter, well, a good tea colour. Do me thin or talkie, a tea colour, a hot dog will up, a good dog, a kick it again, a gony. Oh, silla, me make a guinea, send it a la guinea in it gay. Deep sitter to tobacco or mucola, mother dinner door. This planet is not our home. This planet, the way that it is today, is not your home. God has something better for you. Let me tell you a story and then uh, we are going to close the message. Um, I heard this story a long time ago. It tells us that there was an um, elderly lady. She was probably in her 80s. And she was always faithful to God. And one day that she felt something different. She went to the hospital. And the doctor said that you're sick. There is nothing that I can do for you. You have probably a few months left. So she went back home. She called her pastor. And they spent a good time talking. And they prepared the funeral. And she told the pastor everything that she wanted in her funeral. The songs that uh, she wanted people to sing. The message that she wanted the pastor to preach. And when the pastor was leaving, she said, Pastor, I have one more thing to ask you. And the pastor said, Anything. And she said, Pastor, in the day of my funeral, I want you to get there earlier 
Before anybody else. And you're going to uh, put a, a spoon in my hand. And the pastor did not understand. Why do you want a spoon in your hand? You're going to be dead. You're not going to eat anything. And she said, Pastor, let me tell you a story. Uh, when I was a, a little girl in my parents' home, once in a while, my mom had a special di uh, dish for us. We had our meal together. But after the meal, she still had something special for us. And she'd say, keep your spoon. Because the best is yet to come. Pastor, that's why I want to have the spoon in my hand. Because I believe that the best is yet to come. And I want to tell you this morning, the best is yet to come. So we have so many problems in this world. I'm sure that you lost somebody that uh, you loved. There, there is so much pain and suffering here. But uh, Jesus is giving us a promise here in this chapter. The best is yet to come. When you face all those problems in this world, don't feel that you are by yourself. Don't feel despaired. Remember, the best is yet to come. Jesus is coming very soon. And he has already prepared something very special for you. And always remember, the best is yet to come. So we are very happy uh, today <coughs> that we have here young people making a decision to follow Jesus. You guys have the, the entire life to serve Jesus. The decision that you guys are making today is going to influence the rest of your life. And only God knows where he is going to take you. And how you're going to bless other people. But God has a plan. And the baptism. It's a new beginning. It is also a commitment. To follow Jesus. And to share Jesus with other people. And tell the same thing that you heard today here. That the best is yet to come. So I'd like to invite those that are going to be baptized. To come here because we are going to have the baptismal vows. Yes, please come over here. And before we have the baptismal vows, I just would like to have a prayer with you. A prayer of consecration. And a prayer of surrender. Just turn this decipher. We want to okay. have a ball. Is everybody here? Some are not here. Okay.
Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ. That he came to this world to save us. That he went back to heaven to prepare a place for us. And it's very soon he's coming back to take us home. We are thankful because we have glimpses of heaven in the Bible. And we can see everything that you are preparing for us. And we are thankful that Jesus is going to keep the scars of crucifixion. Because when we are in heaven in eternity, we are going to be able to remember the price that Jesus paid for us to be there. God, you paid the price for those who are being baptized today. You came to save them. And the Bible says that there is joy in heaven with the angels for every person that makes a decision to follow Jesus. And I ask you that... And I ask you that the decision they are making today is not only for today, but for the rest of their lives. Use them to share Jesus with other people. Maybe the mission that they have is to, to share Jesus in this area, in this village. Or to share Jesus in any other place. Only you know. But I ask you that today they make the commitment to follow Jesus. And they always remember. That the best is yet to come. We thank you and we ask you all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.